Hi, uh, it's Matt. Uh, thanks a lot, Lane. I really appreciate uh, you know, your perspective on these issues, and I think the same uh, sort of argument for health information extends to many other areas, which is why open access is such an excellent area, it's an excellent field to be doing work, as well as open educational resources, um, because it, it can impact a lot of different uh, areas. So right now we're going to poke over to the Wiki Project Open Access space. Maybe oh. we can pull this browser. Yes, I see. Um, so I'm going to sw just switch the screen sharing. Sorry, I'm. Uh, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So I've got some links on this Etherpad that you can follow along with, in case we sort of skip around. Um, so the first thing is uh, there's actually maintained by Wiki Project Open Access, an open access file of the day, which exemplifies some of what Alicia was saying of the vast, excellent media, rich media resources that are available on Wikimedia Commons and also especially through open access publications, publications that by and large use open licenses, especially the uh, Creative Commons attribution only license. Uh, and you can check, that, check out this uh, file as well as display it using this template tag uh, on your user page or elsewhere. I recommend taking a look, and maybe you will be inspired, for example, to write an article uh, due to some great image or video. Uh, it's always surprising, surprising things. Um, you can add yourself to the members list if you're interested in Wiki Project Open Access. If you want to follow along or contribute, I recommend it. It's an excellent community of folks. Uh, hopping over to the actual Wiki Project page. Um, you can read and learn a lot more. There are lots of updates, uh, and below you can see an example of that template I mentioned, the open access file of the day, uh, which is this is what will show up on, uh, on your page or any page where you use this template. Uh, and today it seems to be some sort of uh, tumor, an image from a, a medical journal, um, which is excellent and relevant. If anyone's, for example, researching uh, cancer and they're trying to find the latest uh, literature, some of this stuff is actually available um, to get to very quickly. Um, great. So, what we're going to talk about today that's relevant for your course and OER uh, as well is doing assessment as well as uh, how assessment can work and how it can be very valuable uh, to contributing to Wikipedia. Um, so many of these wiki projects actually go through the labor of categorizing and tagging lots of articles so folks know how to improve them and also so this particular community can approach and go about improving articles that have impact and are very valuable. So. Below here, under tasks, under assessment, I'm going to show this whole thing. You can see what's already been achieved. More can be added to this, especially if you happen to find an article, you add a new one through the course, or, or uh, what, what may have you. Um, you can tag them, and they will show up in this uh, actual table. Uh, you can see there's been a 337 total that have been identified as open access related. There's many that are in the top priority list that actually need uh, quite a bit of uh, work, uh, upgrading from sea level, for example. Um, as well as some that have been unassessed. And this is actually really relevant for the course because out of this list of unassessed articles, and this we just popped over to a tool uh, that will show you um, different uh, category uh, articles. So we're looking at this particular category of unassessed articles to the Open Access Wiki Project. There happen to be several that are re related to open uh, educational resources, including uh, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, uh, Open Source Curriculum, uh, and open textbooks, as well as other, like open management education. Um, so let's take a look at a few of these articles real quickly, and we'll just do a little bit of an overview um, of, you know, what do these things look like. So for MOOC, it's fairly obvious at first that, I mean, you, you guys have heard this term a million times at this point, uh, a lot of folks are talking about it, there's been a lot of media coverage. Uh, it's actually very well fleshed out. There's quite a few, if we skip to the bottom, quite a few references. So the open question with this is sort of, uh, where is it at now? What can we use in terms of uh, assessing the article and, and what state is it at? And then secondly, what can we do to improve it? Um, for, this, for this article, it seems like there, there needs uh, quite a bit of research before we can really figure out uh, what, what could be improved, but maybe there are things that are obvious, uh, omissions, for example, or uh, confusing phrasing and confusing uh, sort of uh, this this could use some uh, some time, but that's because it's a fairly fleshed out article, and we can see this. For example, um, what Lane was pointing out, if we check the history page, every history page has a link to statistics of the number of folks actually viewing um, this uh, this article, and so we'll check that out, which will take us to an external tool. 
and let's just uh, show this for the last 90 days. So over the last three months, over uh, 280,000 uh, views um, have accrued. There's some interesting data point here, actually, uh, in the middle of July. I'm not quite sure what happened. There might have been a loss of data collection. But overall, you can see there's a, a pattern. Um, and then there's quite a few people who are coming to Wikipedia, probably through search engines, uh, to learn about what a MOOC is. Uh, so if you're uh, participating in MOOCs, interested in MOOCs, or interested in open education research and open access in general, uh, it'd be really, really valuable if you can provide uh, uh, additional um, value in, uh, in or additional content that folks will be able to access and, and uh, read. Uh, there's a huge audience here. And this, this goes for, for many articles. Um, so MOOC is one of these um, on, the, on the upper end in terms of quality, given how much attention it's received. But let's take a look at some of these other ones. This one, I think, is a particularly interesting one because um, the question to me instantly, and this is relevant for all of you, I'd love to get feedback about this, is uh, what is the difference between open source curriculum and open educational resources? How should they be uh, different? How should, should, should there be room for some and not others? Um, is there really a, a, a definition difference? Is there a vocabulary difference? Uh, is there a historical difference? Uh, how, how should this be tackled? And if you sort of look at this, it looks sort of like a stub article, maybe a start, where there's a list of sort of resources, things that aren't exactly fleshed out. Some are links, some are just names of things. And so it really needs some elbow grease in terms of uh, actually covering uh, the topic itself. And so maybe it might make sense. No one's actually suggested this yet. We can pop over the talk page to take a look. No one suggested it, but maybe this should be merged into the OER page in the first place, mm -hmm. um, which would help people disambiguate between you know, several different terms for essentially the same concept. So if we wanted to suggest that, what would be a good way to go about that? Uh, the easiest thing to do, of course, if like, you don't have the right template or the right link or whatever, just add a comment to the talk page and say, I'm thinking this should do this. And uh, take the next step from there and see if you can find other editors on this uh, mm -hmm. page to, to figure out uh, how, to, how to make that uh, redirect. And then if no one's watching, the, if not too many people are watching this talk page, might we want to leave it on, you know, on another talk page Yes, as well? exactly. And, and this so is very uh, helpful that we have, for example, this template of the uh, Wiki Project Open Access um, uh, on, the, on the talk page so that you can actually uh, go to the project and say, hey, I think this is actually very important. It, it doesn't seem important, perhaps, because it's called the open source curriculum page, not high on the quality scale. But if you make the case, for example, that this should be merged with OER, the importance of this article actually raises. Right? And you might be able to find somebody who be able to help or, or just find some resources to, to move forward and, and improve the article in a way that seems to make sense to you. And I think, I think that's where these communities of wiki projects really uh, play a role in uh, improving um, articles and also, also the editing experience overall. So it's actually, I should probably go back about time. OK, maybe one other point, which we'll, we'll jump right now straight to the open access article. Now we can just grab this link. So something uh, I know the project, Wiki Project Open Access, and, and myself in particular, would love to hear feedback on. This is perhaps uh, the biggest task. Um, Lane's been contributing uh, quite a bit to reorganizing the open access wiki page. And what I would love to hear is how folks approach and, and can understand and get, what do they get out of the open access wiki page, how could it maybe be reorganized, how could it re really be simplified and improved, especially if you're new to the concept of open access. Uh, because right now, there's quite a bit of content. It's been edited for a long time. There are lots of citations. There are lots of sections. Uh, Lynn's been reorganizing, which I think is very helpful. For example, um, making a definition section and sort of uh, disambiguating some of these terms by making them separate from the, the main text. So if we could get some feedback on this, I think it would be uh, really, really great uh, to improving what is a highly trafficked and uh, top priority article um, that a lot of folks for the first time trying to learn about some concepts are going to go to. Uh, and, and this is our, our first chance and opportunity um, to, to uh, make sure that what they, their experience was good and that their experience was not confusing. Uh, and that they can understand and explain to someone else. I guess ultimately that's sort of the metric. Yeah. Can you explain to someone else what Open Access, what open access is? And I think uh, before the class, Matt, we were talking about how, uh, how our students might be especially well placed to really make a substantial contribu contribution to this, specifically because you might not be someone with a lot of expertise in Open Access. Mm -hmm. So when people like Matt and Lane work on an article like this, uh, of course, they have a great deal of experience with it, but sometimes that means that you don't see it with a beginner's mind. So it mm -hmm. can be, it's, it's really a very rich area of collaboration sometimes when you have someone who's new to a topic working on an article alongside 
someone who's very experienced with it, because there might be questions in your mind that aren't answered in the article that, that someone with more experience might not see. Mm -hmm. So you really, you should be very, uh, feel very free to put questions or comments on the talk page or just to edit the article directly if you can see ways to make it more accessible. Yeah, so or, or you can contact Lane or myself on our talk pages on Twitter or whatever. Um, yeah, get, getting the beginner's mind I think is a really excellent way of explaining it is, is I think what this article needs given its state. Yeah.